cataractcoach.com. I will exchange with an open posture capsule. Explaining this light adjustable lens leads to challenges. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Steve Saffron from New Jersey. And you can see this patient has a 28 diopter lens, fibrosed in place. Look at that white ring of fibrosis there. And the patient has tremendous negative and positive dysphotopias, unable to tolerate the lens. So now you can see the first step is making that incision, and it's made more anterior than the original incision, so the two don't intersect. Now, using viscoelastic, a dispersive agent here, to separate the capsule anterior and posterior leaflets. Now, you want to see that fluid wave of viscoelastic going behind the optic, and your goal is to separate out the optic so you can get it out of the capsular bag. And you can see there's that posterior wave going in front of the posterior capsule behind the optic. And again, the capsular bag is fibrosed a bit here. It's going to be a little challenging to get the lens out. Now here, putting in a more of a cohesive agent, look what happens. That viscoelastic now, the cohesive agent, looks deep. Look how deep it looks in the eye. It looks like it's going in the vitreous, right? But why? I thought the posterior capsule was intact. Oh, look carefully. If the vitreous is going down there, adjust the lighting. Now look at the lines there. That's an open posterior capsule. So now what do you do? More challenges. So going back to the viscoelastic, here's the dispersive agent again, slowly, slowly injecting it to get this lens free. Now you can see these haptics look like they're glued in place. Very difficult. He's trying to inject the viscoelastic down that tunnel of fibrosis around each haptic to really separate it out, and that can be a challenge. Now going with the other presentesis to the other haptic, and the same thing here, trying to get viscoelastic to go down that fibrotic tunnel to help uh, release that haptic from its position in the bag. Now you can see at this point, he's trying to get this lens brought up out of the bag, and this one haptic here is just kind of stuck, stuck in place, and he just can't quite get the right leverage to bring it up, and he doesn't want to do too much manipulation. He doesn't want this eye well to go back in the vitreous, so he's just going to amputate off that one haptic. Don't worry, he's going to come back and remove it. So now with the one haptic amputator, it's a lot easier to maneuver this lens, and get the optic above the capsule here, through the capsular axis, and now the other haptic can be pulled out of its tunnel. So now you've got one haptic and the optic above the capsule in the anterior chamber. There it is, and now it can be explanted. So more viscoelastic for protection. Now this lens is made of silicone, but it's a different type of polymer silicone, so it's a very thick lens here. So see micro scissors going across to cut it in half. It's a silicone lens, so you, it's gonna be very slippery. It's gonna be hard to rotate and do our twist technique. And as you see, even as he tries to pull the lens out, notice how pieces of the lens break off. So again, grabbing the lens, going through the main incision here, and trying to grab the lens. And you can see how thick the center part of the optic is. So grabbing the edge of the optic, pulling it out, and again, pieces of this lens are breaking off. So this is kind of not what you're used to. You're used to being able to pull on a lens and have the lens fold on itself and come out of the eye. But he's gonna try again to push it out and still just breaking off little pieces here. And so at this point, you're gonna enlarge the incision here quite a bit, just so you can get that second half out of the eye. So grabbing it here and pulling that out of the eye, there you go, very nice. Now let's try to remove that other haptic that was amputated earlier, and it can be pulled out gently here without causing damage to the zoner support. Because remember, you're gonna need that zoner support to get the new lens in. So just hand over hand, feeding it outside, and now getting it outside the eye, and now you're all cleaned up. Now what are you gonna do for the new lens? Here comes a three-piece silicone lens. This looks like a BNL Li61. And so that's gonna be placed in a reverse optic capture. So the haptics are gonna go behind the anterior capsular axis, and the optic is gonna become in front of the rexus. And we've learned that from Jack Holliday, and you have a podcast from coming up this weekend. Jack Holliday explains all the things about negative, positive dysphotopsias, and how best to deal with them. And he also recommends this, this reverse optic capture with the haptics behind the rexus and the optic in front of the rexus, in front of the anterior lens capsule. So bringing that up, and he'll slowly bring that in position, in, in, in good position, get it nice and centered, and now that's gonna be pretty stable. And so this should help tremendously with the dysphotopsia, especially a silicone lens, and now viscoelastic removal here, be very cautious here. Remember the incision is extra large, so it may cause excessive leakage. You don't want to have too much prolapse of any of the contents here, right? You want to get out the viscoelastic, but you don't want vitreous to prolapse. And Dr. Saffron is doing a good job here, nice and controlled. And the lens is very well supported despite that opening. 
in the posterior capsule here, some triamcinolum being placed in the AC and now sorted around and no prolapse vitreous, looks great. And so the end of the case here, seal up the incisions. The big main incision is probably gonna need a suture or two to make sure that it's completely watertight and astigmatically neutral. And Dr. Saffron reports the patient had a beautiful outcome.